Hey guys, it's Leah Buckles from Prestige Worldwide Medical Consulting. I am a U.S. Army veteran, former CNP examiner, and physician assistant. Um, I wanted to come on today and discuss hypertension or high blood pressure as it relates to VA disability. Um, many veterans are service connected for hypertension or are attempting to receive um, service connection for hypertension, and I just wanted to talk about you know what it is. Um, what are some of the things we see it related to, and then to discuss. Um, Lastly, you know, maybe some of the ratings that you can see and the DBQ or disability benefits questionnaire that you will um, get filled out when you go and to your CMP exam. So let's first start off by talking about um, what hypertension is in general. So hypertension is when your blood pressure exceeds what the standard guidelines say blood pressure should be. There's a couple of different guidelines, but generally um, one of the most popular ones is the Joint National Committee um, guidelines for hypertension or the JNC um, guidelines. I think they're up to like JNC 9 right now, maybe 10. Um, and so these guidelines basically tell you what levels pre-hypertension are, what levels stage one hypertension is considered, and stage two. Um, and those numbers correspond to that upper number or the systolic blood pressure and then that bottom number or the diastolic pressure. Okay, I don't want to get into what all those numbers put you into which category because it's going to bog down the um, conversation and, and probably get kind of confusing, right? So if you've got hypertension, this, this is really just directed at you for you to understand some of the, um, you know, ins and outs of VA disability and hypertension. So what is systole or systolic um, hypertension, right? So that top number relates to when the heart pumps and all of the blood shoots out everywhere it needs to go to feed the body um, the oxygen it needs, okay? So when it is trying to get everywhere, it's under higher pressure, right? And so that higher pressure is going to be that top number, okay? And then when the heart is at rest and the blood is returning to the heart and filling the heart back up and the blood vessels are at rest, that is um, that diastolic or bottom number. Generally speaking, that bottom number is going to be a little low, lower than that top number because it's at rest. Now, um, there are certain conditions that can make that diastolic number higher. I don't want to get into those today because they're just not as common. And, and also, I don't want to bog down and confuse the um, just regular run-of-the-mill hypertension. Okay, so um, if somebody develops hypertension within um, their time on active duty, you know, you serve 20 years, you develop high blood pressure around your 18, 19, even year 10 or six or whatever, and it happens while you're on active duty, you start getting treated for it, you're probably going to have an easy time getting service connected. Okay. So again, um, I am not an accredited agent or a VSO or an attorney. So this is by no way legal advice. Um, this is also not medical advice. This is just me showing you guys um, some info related to VA disability, right? So um, if you get diagnosed within a year um, to a compensable degree, it can be presumptively related to your service. I did a video about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, so if you would like to look at what other conditions are con considered um, presumptively related within one year, um, you can check that video, video out as well. Um, so now that we've talked about what is hypertension, um, we talked about direct, um, we've talked about presumptive within one year. Oh, there's also um, a lot of talk about Agent Orange exposure and hypertension that's been on the table for quite some time. I've read a lot of articles, um, you know, and there's a lot of talk about adding that to the presumptive list for Vietnam veterans, um, which I hope um, gets added in if it hasn't been already by the time this video um, comes out. Um, so those are kind of some of those primary or di direct ways or presumptive ways. Um, there are also secondary service connections for hypertension. So we see a lot of medical conditions that can cause or aggravate um, high blood pressure or hypertension. Um, one of the most common ones is sleep apnea, right? So if you've got sleep apnea, a lot of times um, if it's been untreated for a very long time or undiagnosed, um, sometimes you'll have really out of control blood pressure and your doctor will say, well, let me see if you've got, high, uh, let's see if you've got sleep apnea, um, you know, because it can be a sign of undiagnosed sleep apnea. So there can be, um, you know, then a person can get a sleep study, get a CPAP and their hypertension can get under control, right? Um, so they're generally speaking, when you're having these apneic events at night, your body is not resting and doing what it needs to do to um, 
you know, maintain, uh, you know, normalcy and you can develop systemic hypertension or systemic vascular resistance due to, um, you know, a lot of the effects of sleep apnea, right? Um, and it can also worsen it. So other conditions that can be related to hypertension or chronic kidney disease, this also has a bidirectional relationship. If you've got chronic kidney disease, it can um, worsen your hypertension. Hypertension can damage the kidneys also. Um, obesity as an intermediate step. So I did a video on this recently as well. If you're obese um, related, uh, if your obesity was caused by um, or directly related to one of your service connected disabilities, it can be used as a bridge um, to show, you know, hey, this person's got PTSD and, um, you know, they don't like to go work out because they've got a social phobia. They have a binge eating disorder because of their mental health, because of their depression, their service connected for that. Um, you know, they develop obesity or they become obese and then they develop hypertension, right? It can be a bridge or um, a link to that next disability. Um, other things, orthopedic ailments. If you've got back pain, you've got an amputation, things that inhibit you um, from exercising and doing the things that you used to be able to do to maintain um, a more normal body um, habitus that can also re uh, be related to obesity as an intermediate step. NSAID use. So if you're using anti-inflammatories regularly, anti-inflammatories can be um, like ibuprofen can be known to raise blood pressure over time as well, um, especially if we're having um, any kidney impacts, right? Because of those medications. Um, so I'm looking at my little list here. We talked about kidney disease, obesity, NSAID use, stress in general, right? Just having stress can increase your blood pressure, your service connected for PTSD or depression or anxiety. These things can increase your blood pressure as well and you can see some spikes, right? Now, this is also a multifactorial disorder. So if you've got multiple things going on, they can all be related, right? So if a person asks me, hey, um, which one of these things, sh you know, should I choose? I'm like, well, I don't, ever tell somebody how to file, but if I'm looking at it from a medical perspective, if there's more than one thing contributing, good or bad, um, whether it's related to your service or not, it has to be included in my analysis of, do I think this is related to the person's service, right? If you're a smoker, you're not service connected for being a smoker, but that can contribute to your hypertension. That has to be addressed, right? Because if you've got these risk factors, they're certainly going to be um, assessed when you get to that CMP exam, you would think, right? And so if, you know, we don't talk about those, you know, non-modifiable risk factors like your gender and your age, um, your family history in some of the modifiable risk factors like um, smoking, things like that. Um, those things have to be discussed, right? But back to multiple things um, causing it from your service standpoint, you know, maybe you're Orthopedic ailments are adding to it. Maybe your sleep apnea is adding to it. I include all of that information if I'm writing a letter for somebody related to their disability. Um, I don't just pick one thing because it's multifactorial, whether it's this or any other condition. So um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the ratings, right? So I don't usually get into ratings, but I figured I would show it because um, I want to show you guys where to look where you can look at the most up-to-date ratings. Um, so if you go to um, basically the 38 Code of Federal Regulation, I'm gonna flip my camera around here. Um, so I go look up the 38 Code of Federal Regulation and I get to, um, you know, I just put in 38 Code of Federal Regulation up here. And then I click on the va.gov website. It's gonna pull up um, basically Schedule for ratings, book C. I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to come on down here to schedule for ratings. And you can see here that all of the different um, like body systems are listed, but we're going to go to the cardiovascular system right now. And then I'm going to pull up Schedule of Ratings Cardiovascular, and I'm going to open that up. Okay, and I'm going to come over here to my other screen, and I'm going to scroll over to, I'm going to just search the document real quick. Okay, 
diseases of the arteries and veins, hypertension, okay? So as you guys can see, it's, um, it lays out kind of like what levels are going to be at the 60% if that diastolic or bottom number is over 130, it's 60%. If that diastolic number is over 120, it's 40% et cetera, so on and so forth. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys where that was so you can come and look at it. Again, you're just going to go look for, um, you know, VA ratings or 38 code. I mean, there's a lot of other websites out there that show these numbers as well. But if you want to go to va.gov, it's they're listed in here and you can just toggle over to whichever section it is. Like, I, you, you know, you might want to rewind the video and take a look um, at how to get there. So, I also wanted to go over the DBQ, right? So what is a DBQ? It's a disability benefit questionnaire, okay? Um, this one is for hypertension. This is also found on va.gov, so you can kind of go and take a look at it. This is the um, form that's going to be filled out when you go over to your CMP exam, okay? You can also print this off and take it to your treating provider and ask them if they'll fill it out for you, Um so if we go down to the section that talks, this this section basically talks about, um, you know, who's filling it out. Is it your treating doctor? Is it somebody else? I don't fill these forms out, but if I did, I would, you know, put that they're not a patient in my clinic, et cetera. Um, but you can take it to your regular doctor and maybe they'll fill it out or your VA doctor. So at the CMP exam, they're going to go over this. I filled these out when I was an examiner. So they're going to put what your diagnosis is up here in the top. Um, then they're going to talk about, um, are there other diagnoses that pertain to hypertension or isolated systolic hypertension and list them. You know, I might put, if you've got chronic kidney disease, sleep apnea, um, whatever, describe the history. So you're going to tell them, you know, about your history and they're going to discuss that based on their review of your records and whatever you tell them. Um, do you take medications? List them. So um, the doctor or PA or whoever is going to write what medications you're taking. Um, then down here, this is where they're going to list your your readings, your um, blood pressure readings, because they're going to base that rating off of those blood pressures if they decide it's service-connected, right? Um, so they're going to want several different readings that are going to go in there. Let's see. And then... Do you have any complications or physical findings that are related? And they would annotate that down here in 3A. Um, every DBQ seems to have a questionnaire about do you have scars related to the condition? Um, I don't know why it would be pertinent to this one unless, you know, you had some kind of procedure done related to your hypertension. Um, and then they're going to ask about it's, um, does it impact your ability to work, right? And then the person's going to sign it, um, date it, put their information on here and that's about that okay so I'm gonna flip my camera again so generally speaking that's about it for hypertension that was my quick down and dirty on that now keep in mind there are other things that can be caused by hypertension right so hypertension can cause things like erectile dysfunction hypertension can cause aortic aneurysms hypertension can cause uh you know can be related to other things that are um problematic in the heart. Um, we have a girl that works with us at Procedural Wide who worked in cardiology for tons of years, Heather. She's fantastic. Um, I do a lot of these cases, but she also does quite a number of them because she's worked in cardiology so long. So if you'd like to work with us, just, um, you know, reach out. Um, like I said, uh, I always say nexus letters are never required, but they can be sometimes be helpful. Hopefully some of this information I've shared with you, you can discuss with your provider. They might even write you a letter or write you a couple sentences about um, some of these things about why your blood pressure may be related to your service and it might help you. Um, I hope this was helpful for you guys. If y'all have any other questions, please go ahead and drop them in the comments. Um, you can reach out. Our website has a great blog. I think I have a hypertension blog that you guys can um, read or check us out on Facebook. I try to put out a lot of content there as well. And if there are any other videos you guys would like to see, please just let me know. And um, I hope this was helpful. Thank you.